welcome everyone. Can I get your attention please? Can everybody begin to move toward their tables please? Grab a beer or a glass of wine and head towards your table. Let's move towards our tables, please. We've got a lot of fun things for tonight, so we want to get started. seated once you get there. Be comfortable. No need to stand. Be comfortable.
once you find your table, please go ahead and take a seat so we can see how many open places we have. If I could have your attention, there are a few things I'd love to share with you tonight as you're finding your tables. First of all, many of you know the, about the items that we have on display to my left. Some of you have not heard the story, so I would love to share the story with you about those items. Back in August, as we were planning for, or even earlier in June, as we were planning to celebrate our centennial, this is our 100th anniversary on Franklin Street, I remembered reading in the history of our parish that when the church was consecrated in May of 1912, they dug up the time capsule out of the original church on 5th and Marshall Street that was started in 1838. And they took that time capsule from underneath the cornerstone and they combined it with a, another time capsule in 1912 and placed it, our history said, inside the cornerstone of our St. James's on Franklin Street. So back this summer, I started to think about how wonderful it would be if we could find those time capsules and get them out from the cornerstone and unpack them, learn about them, and celebrate our history this year. Well, it took us a week to find them. Our history said that these time capsules were in our cornerstone. So my thanks to Bobby Garland and Charlie C. and Taylor and Parrish for coming in and delicately helping us to examine the cornerstone, the, the cornerstone on the outside of the church, helping me to examine the cornerstone to see if it was indeed hollow. Well, after days of using radar and very small drills, we discovered that the cornerstone was not hollow. So, our history had a very detailed list of what was in the time capsules, but it said it was in the cornerstone. So after many days of looking, uh, Charlie C., who works for Taylor & Parrish, was on the floor in the closet in the narthex. That closet in the narthex that's next door to the, the sort of um, armoire, children's armoire that holds all the coloring materials. And he was delicately drilling in the wall. He said, well, I can drill underneath the cornerstone to see if there's something there. So over a series of hours, because it's 18 inches of brick, he delicately drilled three holes and found nothing. And we were just getting ready to quit, to give up on this kind of crazy experiment. And he said, well, I can drill one more hole or we can just call it a day. And I said, well, Charlie, you're on the floor. Go ahead, drill one more hole. So he did. He drilled one more hole and he said, I think I hit something. So he pulled it out and he made the hole a little bit bigger. This all takes an hour, an hour and a half or so. And we could see that it was copper. So he said, it could be flashing, let me drill another hole. So he drilled another hole, and just by chance, that second hole went down the side of the box. So we knew it wasn't flashing, we knew it was something rectangular. So it took Charlie about another day to make the hole big enough to get the time capsule out. And that time capsule, if you saw the video early, you saw the video of us unpacking it in front of the vestry this summer so that we could begin our research on the contents. Inside that copper box was the lead box from 1838, which is on display back there. The copper box was too big to bring over. And the lead box had been opened in 1912 and, the, and everything looked at, but then put back in that box, that box put into the copper box, the whole thing placed underneath our cornerstone. And the history of the items in there is just fabulous. 
And so I hope if you haven't had a chance to go over and look at them, uh, some things date from 1775 all the way up to newspapers from 1912. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. And um, I want to be able to thank Bobby Garland and Charlie for their work for Taylor and Parish. I want to thank um, Caroline Parkinson and Matt Presson for their work in uh, cataloging all of this material, and especially Matt Presson, who has spent hours upon hours. He did all the layout, all the cards, all the explanations of all the items back there. And uh, where is Matt? Matt, there he is. Bill Lohman from the Richmond Times-Dispatch came and interviewed us yesterday about it. And we think there may be an article on um, Thursday in the Dispatch about our time capsule. So be on the lookout for that. We hope it'll be this week, if not next week. So as we begin tonight, we celebrate um, our whole history and the wonderful artifacts that we have. And we also celebrate our future together. So as we begin tonight, let's, um, let's have a prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this wonderful evening, for all those who have given hours to volunteer, to cook, to set up, to arrange, to organize, to plan. I give you thanks for all those who have given their evening to come and be here in celebration of our life together. Bless this food to our use and bless us to your service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now we have two serving stations. One on this side of the room, and one on that side of the room. So we're going to, if you've been to the feast before, you know how this works. We're going to divide the room down by half, and we're going to start to send the tables from the center out. So if we'll divide it right here, so if you guys will start moving and get your food, and when they come back, send some more tables, and we'll do that also from this direction. And table hosts, should please be sure to help those who may need some assistance. Thanks, go get something good to eat. Oh, before you go, one thing I forgot, please. Our event is oversold, so if you have an empty seat at your table, raise your hands. Okay, good. If you don't have a seat on your name tag, go fill in one of the seats. All the staff do not have seats, so we did the family hold back, so. We're going to go find some, some place to get some good food. Thank you. <laughs>